Hello and welcome back. In this video we will create our first C++ program. Now this video assumes you have already installed Visual Studio. If you have not installed Visual Studio, please see the video on how to install Visual Studio. I have Visual Studio on my taskbar. I will click the Visual Studio icon. I will select New Project, and in this class we always want to ensure that Visual C++ is highlighted, and we will always create Win32 console applications. Let's name this project Hello World, because that's the first thing we do when we come into the world. We will click Next and we will ensure th these are clear. That means do not have these checked and check Empty Project and press the Finish button. Now, you can see I have a Solution Explorer. It is currently minimized. If I click on this Solution Explorer, I get the file structure of the project. Right now I have no files in my project. Let's create our main file. So I want to right click on Source Files, click Add, and click New Item. C++ is the default here, so let's call this program main. And we'll add this. Now you can see our edit window shows up here, and we are editing main.cpp. If we look back at our Solution Explorer, we can see that main.cpp is now in the folder called Source Files. The first thing we should do when we create a project or a file is add a few comments. Comments are created with the double slash. Let's call this my first program. Hello world. I want to exclaim to the world that I am here. The very first thing you need to do in most if not all your programs is include a library file. We will get into library files later, but right now type in pound include angular black bracket and let's select IO stream. Now I just type in the first three characters. Now the IDE, the integrated developer in my environment, is giving me some ideas of what I can select in this case. IO stream is what I want to select. So if I highlight IO stream using the cursor control or the mouse, I can press enter or hit the left mouse button and the rest of the item is filled out. But we also need to include the final angular bracket. Another thing we want to always include is using name, space, and again it's here, standard. And most C++ commands are ended with a semicolon. Not all, but most of them all. Now we can see we have some red squigglies here. So why do we have these red squigglies? We have an error. 
Okay, in this case, I know what the error is. But whenever you see red squigglies, if you hover over the red squiggly, you can see what the error is. Now, C++ is case sensitive. In most cases, you want to use lowercase. There are exceptions, and we will get to these later. But in most cases, use lowercase. Now, the main function of a C++ program is always called main, and it always returns a value called int. Enter the following, int main open paren, close paren, and then these curly braces. Notice I entered one, the second one showed up. So the last thing of a main program you want to return to the user, which means exit the program. So enter return, and we always want to return zero if our program was successful. Now we could write the rest of our program. We want to write a string, which is just a sentence. And we accomplish that by typing the word C out, two less than signs. And our strings or our sentences will always go in double quotes. I want a hello world with an ex exclamation point. And then I will conclude it with a semicolon. Now, as we can see, we have no errors. So let's run this program. To run the program, we want to come up here to debug. And we can select Start Without Debugging. Or we can press the Control F5 key. I will start without debugging. And since I've never compiled this program or I've never run this program, it will launch a window, exclaim hello world, press any key to continue. Now that doesn't look very well right there because the hello world is on top of the press any key to continue. Now where did press any key to continue come from. Whenever I run without debugging, the program finishes and the last thing that's displayed is press any key to continue. That is not something from the program. That is something the IDE will always enter so you can see what happened on the screen. In this case, I want to modify my program because I don't like how it looks. So I will hit return here. And I will go to line 10 and add an endl. Endl basically means do a carriage return after the hello world. So let's try this again. Let's Press the Control F5 key now and see Hello World with the exclamation point is on a separate line from the Press Any key to continue. That is our first program. Hello World. Basically, we have some comments here, and comments are denoted by two slashes. We include a library file. What this is, is this is additional commands from another file that we say grab them. It's like going to the library and checking out a book. And we could access everything in the book or in the library for doing commands. Using namespace standard that's like a shortcut. Just always use namespace standard. A C++ program will always have a main program. The main program is always called first. 
and it always returns a zero if it is successful. This return zero corresponds with that int up here on line eight. So I'm going to return an integer and it is zero. Then I print, then I have, excuse me, I have the curly braces which denote the start of the function and the end of the function. Notice that when I'm on one of the curly braces, the other curly brace, the matching curly brace, is highlighted. In between there, I have my commands. My output command, which is hello world, and then my return statement. Now that we've created our C++ program, I'd like to show you a little bit of what's happening behind the scenes. We have created our main .cpp program. This is just a file on your disk. If we look at our Solution Explorer, it shows up under Source Files. We also have something called Header Files. We will get into Header Files later in the semester, but Header Files will also consist of files for a program. Now let's say you want to know where this main .cpp file is. The easiest way is to come up here and right click on the tab main.cpp. Click on open containing folder. A file manager window opens up and in this case my file is in OneDrive Projects Hello World Hello World. Now Visual Studio creates this file structure. So you just have to accept that Hello World is followed by Hello World and then you can see your C++ program. Now if you want to navigate to a C++ program you've already written. You could just come here if you go up one folder and you could double click on the SLN file here. That will launch Visual Studio, the project called Hello World. You can see I have all my projects in my project folder. There's a lot of projects in here. Here's my whole Hello World project. I also have a project called Is Prime. Let's click that and you can see isprime.sln. Well, if I wanted to, I can just double click this isprime.sln and Visual Studio would launch Is Prime. So let's do that to show you what happens. Visual Studio opens up. It opens up the entire project. And if I look at my Solution Explorer, I can see I have isprime.cpp under source files. If I double click this, it shows up in my edit window. So I close that window. Let's go to this fib iterate. If you were to just click on the file itself, the C++ file itself, it would not open the project. It would just open the file. See right now it just opened this fib iterate file in my hello world project. I cannot run fib iterate from my hello world project. It does not make sense. It does it is not in the hello world project. So if I run control F5 right now, all I'm running is my hello world program. That is one thing to remember. If you open C++ files directly, you will not be able to run the program. This concludes the video.